Okay, norborning hydration, is that right for this week? It's our first uh, synthesis lab. We'll be hydrating an alkene, hydration reaction. Okay, going around here on this uh, salmon colored sheet is a uh, alkene puzzle. Uh, basically some additional homework questions. I'm not going to show up too well here. Uh, it's a puzzle. Lots of questions down here. Each answer has a letter associated with it. The answers are on the other page for you to choose from. Uh, each time you answer it, you fill in the answer to the riddle. I have filled two in for you already because we will not be covering those reactions in organic one. I covered those in organic two. Uh, the riddle is this. How is the alkene able to learn all of its electrophilic reactions? Well, the answer is because and I reckon since that says and, I reckon the first one's a vowel. Is that right? Um, at some point we'll see what the answer to that riddle is. Okay, uh, green sheet. We have green sheet, we have white handout, yeah? Uh, are we good to go? Any questions? Anything good? I will also say this about test two. Test two typically is more difficult because we're doing more reactions, more mechanisms, and you guys typically sort of get behind, and you can't start learning this stuff at the last minute. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of test one was a little bit of review from Jen Kim. We just sort of get it into organic mode. Uh, test two is more all brand new stuff. Reactions, can't get behind. Uh, average score typically drops about 10 points on the second test. All right. But there is also some, some students who typically come up because you see that the, you need to just do a little bit better. Uh, but on average, the test score average does drop. Uh, try not to let that happen. All right. Does not have to happen. Uh, green sheet. Okay, let's look there. Very important. We'll, we'll look at this. Hopefully, you've been looking at it. I know people have been asking and we've been talking about this. I did not give you anything that is not critical to be looking at. One of the most important handouts of the semester, right here, guys mechanisms. Two mechanisms for making nucleophile to carbon bonds. One, nucleophilic addition to carbocation. If we can have a carbocation somehow, a nucleophile, which hopefully you know the definition of a nucleophile, typically some, a long pair, this, these electrons can add and make bond to the carbocation, and now the nucleophile is bonded to the carbon. The bonding pair used to be a lone pair on the nucleophile. We also have stereochemistry with these reactions. Look at the two possible outcomes here. The nucleophile can be forward compared to the backbone, or it can be back compared to the backbone. Yes, that's because what is the hybridization and geometry of this carbocation? What's the hybridization of the carbocation? SP2 geometry? Trigonal planar. Yes. Uh, trigonal planar. Uh, okay, it's a cation that's planar. Just like the piece of paper. Planar. Alright. Nucleophile attacks it. Which side is it going to attack from? You have two sides. Which side is it going to attack? The plus is the plus. It's all there. Okay, it's sitting right here. Which side do you attack from? Um, well, it's all there, so it's Attack. Okay, so you attack from this side. No, you did it right. You're going to attack. There you go. Now you, now you attack. Oh, you attack from that side. Both sides. Nucleophiles on that side attack over here. Nucleophile on that side attack over here. But when you got a billion molecules, 
you got a 50% chance of them being over here, and you got a 50% chance of them being over here. Okay? This is going to be 50-50. Because 50% 50 of the nucleophiles are on the board on your side, and if you're on your side, how do you attack here? You're going to attack from this side, and your new bond will be like this. Like throwing darts. If you throw a dart at the board, is it going to be sticking out like this, or will it be sticking out from the other side of the board? It'll be sticking out like this. Okay? Yes. The bond will be sticking out like this. If you throw it from the other side, it's going to be like that. Okay? How do you attack a planar carbocation? From both sides. 50-50. Straightforward. There you go. All right. This is all explained here. We have a, a, a way to make a nucleophile to carbon bond right here. What is it? Nucleophile attacking carbocation. What's the serial chemical outcome? We went over it. 50-50. You got to know that, like your middle name. Now, most books are not going to show this page like this. This information will be spread over five chapters. I'm condensing it down to one page to hopefully make it easier for you. Okay? Second way to make, to make what? I forgot what we're doing. Let's look at the heading. Oh, we're making nucleophile carbon bonds, right? What's another way to make a nucleophile carbon bond? Displacement of a leaving group. You have some type of leaving group on a carbon. What's a leaving group? It's a group that leaves. Okay? The nucleophile can come in here and attack the carbon and kick it off and make it leave. Displace it. Replace it. Substitute it. All three words mean the same thing. So the nucleophile is making a bond to the carbon, and these electrons are leaving. What, are the, what does this arrow mean to you? That the electrons move on to the LG. The LG is now going to have a lone pair. The leaving group is typically an atom, but it can be additional atoms bonded to that atom. The nucleophile is now bonded to carbon. Hopefully that's what these arrows mean to you. Stereochemistry. Whenever this happens, it's always backside attack. Okay? Now there's a variety of ways to show this. I show it below. Backside. Here we don't have a free carbocation. Here we got a, a group there. We're going to kick it off. Okay? Now I'm going to hold it like this. How are you going to kick it off? No, we're not attacking from either side. How are we attacking? I believe it. So it right here. Oh, backside. Okay. How are you going to attack? Exactly. Backside. Backside means opposite side of the leaving group. We call it backside. Why didn't you attack over here? Because the leaving group's right there. It's in the way. That's why we do backside. So here you have to, okay? So you don't attack from that side. What if it was a free carbocation? You can attack from either side. Okay? So what do you have to do if you're over here and it's like this? You're going to have to swim around and attack backside. And so, because of that, the consequence is it's called inversion. For example, if the, if the leaving group is faced forward, like this, how's the nucleophile going to come in? From the back. From back. So it's going, to, it's going to end up like this, because it came in from the back. So you get a precise outcome, where above you've got 50-50 random outcome. Both. You don't get both there. You only get in what's called inversion. This can be shown another way. If the leaving group is back, the nucleophile is going to come in from the front and kick off the leaving group. And this will be forward. Okay? A variety of ways to show this. Stereochemistry will do this more and more. If the leaving group is up, in the plane, straight up, how's the nucleophile going to come in? Straight down. And so it would be straight down in terms of this.
Uh, remainder of this handout is some very important guidelines to mechanisms. Common mistakes. Again, if you want my recommendations for how to do mechanisms and how to do them well. Free information. Okay? No donation plate. It's going to be passed around. It's all free. Please read. Try not to make those mistakes. Please learn from every statement that's made there. Okay. get back to where we're going. We may end up uh, with a little THC. Are you guys familiar with THC? Anybody? No? Okay. Here's a, here's a, here's a reaction that Provides THC. This is how the marijuana plant makes THC. <laughs> Plants are very I mean, amazing chemical factories. So it's a chemical reaction. What's the mechanism for this reaction? I heard hydrohalogenation. There's no halogen on the board here at all. No. There's no halogen. Okay, there you go. There's some homework to be looking at. Let's see where we left off at. <coughs> Hydration of alkenes. We hydrated an alkene with, with aqueous acid. You got to have acid. Alkenes don't react with water, but they will react with H. We get the carbocation. Water acts as a nucleophile. Nucleophile adding the carbocation. Which, by the way, was Roman number one on the previous page, right? How do you type carbocation? <coughs> Both sides, either side. What ratio? 50-50. Yeah, it's not exactly 50-50. We'll we'll modify that as we go along, maybe. Um, there's a little something else that can influence it, but in some books don't even talk about what can influence it. Some books just say 50 50. One or two books will discuss a little bit of modifications to that. Uh, we went through that mechanism, yeah? Uh, that mechanism is actually completely reversible. That is, you can take an alcohol and remove water, dehydrate it. Dehydration of an alcohol leads to an alkene, typically. Think about it going in reverse. We will do this reaction in reverse during test three. The mechanism will be the same, just in reverse. The first step will be what? Formating the oxygen. The next step will be what? This leaving. Make the carbocation, and then we can remove the H to put in the double bond. Okay? I'm just telling you now that it is reversible, and we'll see it later. And it's what we call a dehydration. Okay? That's what we just say there. So let's see how we did on products here. This alkene. Okay. You gotta, when you look at a reaction, there is a little bit of memorization. Okay? We say you can't memorize. All right? There's a little bit, because memorization gets you going. Alkene and aqueous acid. What, what type of reaction are we doing? Hydration. Hydration. Well, that's just memorization, I think. You gotta just know that. Okay? And alkene with with, with aqueous acid is it's, it's always hydration. That's what it is. It, it's not no other option. So you do that, and then you but then comes your mechanistic knowledge, and you're and you're able to rationalize. Okay? So you can just work your way towards the product as opposed to memorizing every product. We can work through. What's the first step of this mechanism? The double bond. <coughs> oh, sorry. The double bond attacks the H on the H plus. Now you can show this for me, H plus and water. Just show it like that. 
Okay? Uh, it's only two mole there. Again, H plus does not exist, actually, but it's okay for me in, in this case. And, and some hi, but where are we going to leave cations? The same old question every time. Left or right? Left. 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 So these are, so here we go. We're going to pull away from here and go make bond like that. Pull away, make bond. New bond to H, carbocation here, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Very common for you guys to end up with the wrong number of carbons over here. Please pay attention to your number of carbons. Right? It used to be a pi bond. It went out and made bond to H, leaving this with only three bonds. Thus, that's a carbocation. Secondary, we would never do it like this and leave a primary cation. This is going to be the, the pathway, the regiochemistry. What attacks the cation? Yes. Boom. Here. Nucleophile attacks cation. Roman number one, way to make the carbon nucleophile bond. What is that going to do? Um. All right. The new H there. Here. Let's go ahead and do stair chemistry. How is, how is the oxygen bond going to be projected here on this part? Forward or back. Is it going to take it from the front or back? That's planar. Both. Oh. Both. Oh. We're going to have the oxygen forward. And there's two H's here. And that's a plus charge. Lots of structure here. This arrow gives this, plus what? Plus, plus that. The nucleus will attack from both the front and the back. Now, drew both of these out. In the future, we may do a kind of just a shortcut to just indicate this uh, as we talk more about stair chemistry. Then what's the next step? This is going to, this is going to become a neutral. Typically, we get neutral products when we can. What do we do next? Final step? Something takes the hydrogen here. What can take it? It's got to be a minus here. This has got to be like aqueous sulfuric acid or aqueous phosphoric acid. But it's just shown very generically. We can just use water to take the H. These electrons, this is just an acid base reaction. Take the H, these electrons move on to oxygen. And that's going to give. That there, plus, what did we make here? H3O plus, catalyst reform, that's, that's acid. That's H plus, this is H plus again, really. We reform the H plus. But this is also going to be there, I'm not going to show that, but uh, okay. Going to get that. We're also going to get that one neutral. I'm going to just say plus an antimer. Because these two are actually an antimers. We'll see that later. For your notes right now, you can just call it an antimer. This reaction gives both an antimers. Because how? Because the nucleophile attacks the carbocation from both sides. That dictates the stereochemistry outcome. Again, we'll have to learn about stair chemistry. This is a Kyle carbon, but thus we need to, we have the possibility of an antimer. Okay. There's lots more discussion there. We get an alcohol. We hydrate the alkene to make that alcohol. This molecule now has the elements of H2O added to it compared to where we started. That reaction should be regio-selective. 
the OH should only be on this carbon. We do not expect the OH group to end up out there. Next one. Instead of using water, we're using ethanol here. Product, I'll come this way here. I'll just show the product. I'm thinking mechanistically. I'm working on my scratch paper. You just don't see it. My product that I get from my scratch paper is going to look like Look like that. How are we doing that one? Anybody get that one? Yeah. But you you said receiving. Why did you say receiving? Not carbon. Not carbon. Not applicable. Not a carbon part. Not the same. Yes, I'd be doing this. All right. I don't need to show any dash or bold here. We'll talk about that more down the road. First step here. What do we got? Ethanol is like water. It's not electrophilic. It's just water with an alkyl group. Not going to react to them. You got HF. Hmm, that's acid. And HF is one of the acids I told you will react with alkene, which is an acid catalyst. H plus source. H plus. Where are we going to make cation, left or right? On the left, correct. Electrons here. Uh, boom. UH there, and carbocation here, tertiary carbocation. Maybe I should come this way. What can attack carbocation? We said F minus, the conjugate base here, will never do anything in this class. So don't use it. So what can you use? What, what, is it, what is here in this reaction that can act as a nucleophile? Lone pair on oxygen, which is the same exact answer we gave above. Lone pair on oxygen. You see it up there? The only difference is this oxygen, instead of bonding to two H's, it's bonded to an H and an alpha. No different. Lone pair on oxygen. Bam. What does that give? We'll come this way. Boom. Lone pair may bond to carbon, one lone pair left, plus an ethyl group. Hold on, there's something else left. There's also an H on the oxygen. Um, there's also an H there, one lone pair left. That's ethanol, one lone pair bonded here. That's what we're doing here. That's a plus charge. Nucleophile attack carbon. You got to think more generically. Water's a nucleophile attack carbocation. <coughs> well, guess what? There's a there's a main and one types of nucleophiles that, that can attack carbocation. What what you learn though is the basic step: nucleophile attack carbocation. What is a nucleophile? Something with a lone pair typically is the most introductory definition of nucleophile. Here, we want to go neutral. How are we going to go neutral? If the atom has an H, it's going to go neutral by losing the H. If it did not have an H, it either is not going to be able to go neutral or it's going to go neutral some fancier way which we have not kind of seen yet or which you may have to sort of propose. But this is a good old, it's, it's going to lose the H. What can take the H? 
You could use ethanol, could actually take it like water, but I like to reuse the conjugate base. I've already said that. This, okay? Bam, you can use less ink. And then these electrons move here. What does that give? It gives this, lone pair back, plus what? HF, catalyst reform. The HF supplied the reactive proton to start the whole reaction. And then we reform the acidic pH plus. We didn't make an alcohol here. What type of product did we make here? That's an ether. Ether there. What did we do? It's the same reaction. All we did was instead of using water, we used an alcohol. And when you react with an alcohol, we're, we, we essentially added an alcohol. Because if you look at the difference in formula, this has ethanol added to it. Here's the ethylene O, ethylene O, and where's the H? The new H is on that carbon. So the elements of ethanol are now in this molecule. But they're not all it's the same, though. Uh, okay, and what we just did there is on our outline as number... Roman numeral three, yeah? It's analogous in all respects, except that it's used in yeah, alcohol, and thus your product is an ether. Okay, here's what some of your friends may tell you to do. I would call them good friends. They'll tell you. You gotta memorize this. Alkenes react with al alcohols to form ethers. I would never, I would never memorize that. I would do the reaction and say, you know what? It is an ether. I don't need to memorize that. I can see it's an ether. All right. What you learn is your mechanism, and obviously you can tell this is an ether. I mean, I hope you can. We, we, we can function. So be careful what people try to tell you to memorize. Think mechanistically. Think for yourself. Uh, okay. Number four, carbocation rearrangement. Oh yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's look at this. Look at this reaction here. You take this alkene, looks like we're hydrating it, right? Make this acid. Looking to make an alcohol. Where are you going to make cation? Top or bottom? Bottom, and so water would attack the cation, you would end up with the OH here. Seems like a reasonable... Well, hold on, I would expect that to be the major product. Saying it's minor here. The major product has the OH over here. Well, the pi bond is here. We typically are adding things across the pi bond, either here or here. I mean. Somehow we're getting nucleophile bonded over here. This carbon has three methyls. This carbon no longer has three methyls, it only has two. What's going on here? It's ultimately a carbocation rearrangement. Let's look at this. First step H plus, water. Alkane attacks here. UH there, carbocation here. We 
should be able to get to the minor product. Water attacks here, and then you lose proton. Hopefully you see that right. But let's get a mechanism for the major product that I show here. We got a skeleton, skeleton here, our backbone, the skeleton. And sometimes this is called a skeleton rearrangement. I don't use that term too much. I just say carbocation rearrangement. Carbon with three methyls, carbon with two methyls. Look over here. This carbon has two carbons bonded to it. But here, this carbon only has one. It's almost like one of these carbon groups needs to move over here. And indeed, that's what needs to happen. Okay, what can be attracted to this cation? Those electrons. But if those electrons bonded here, we would not get the major product. We'd get the minor product. What else can be attracted to this cation? And the answer is neighboring electrons. This is a two electron bond here. Here's the carbon. Okay, let's draw the CH3 here. You gotta know that those are electrons between that carbon and that carbon. Two electron covalent bond. They're bonding, but they're still electrons. They're still negative particles. And as you learn in physics, negative is going to be attracted to positive. So there's going to be some attraction here. And what happens here, and how we show it, is these two electrons are just attracted so much to that that they break away from this carbon and go bond to that carbon. And we show this like this. Here we go. How would you show this with your hand? You would take this, pull it away from that carbon, and go move it over there and bond it like that. Same thing with an arrow. Take it and pull it away from that carbon and move it over there. What does this give? Well, what did we just describe that the arrow is supposed to mean? We now have see this was here. I went over there and bonded there. Now you, you can show that any way you want. This bonding will do it more perfectly. This group moved over there. We'll call it CH3 still. I'll draw that new H in one more time. It's still there. But this carbon, how many bonds to this carbon? Is there an H here? No, there's no H there. It doesn't just magically appear. There's no H. The methyl just moved over. There's nothing else here. There's only three bonds. So this is a plus charge now. And this would be called a 1-2 alkyl shift. What shifted over? The methyl group. Generically called an alkyl group. Most books will not say 1-2. It's called alkyl shift. I'm going to call it 1-2 because later on we're going to possibly see 1-3 and 1-4. So it makes sense that we understand the terminology. What does that mean? If this is one, this is not nomenclature. This is the group is on the one. Where does it move? It moves next door, so we're going to call that two. If the methyl went from here to there, what would we call it? One three. One, three. You get the, you get the idea. <coughs> it's also called a carbocation rearrangement because the carbocation was here. By the way, what type of cation is this? Secondary. Carbocation rearrangement led to what type of cation? Tertiary. Tertiary. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. It went to a better cation. Carbocation rearrangements occur to get to a better cation, typically. But it's internal. It doesn't have to wait for any nucleophile to come in. 
and internal reactions are always faster. So this just naturally sort of happens here. Uh, let's see if we can illustrate this with our, uh, here. Uh, here's the carbon methyl bind, your carbocation. These electrons, ooh, I like carbocations. They're going to be attracted to you. And eventually they're going to be like, sorry. I'm just going to go over here. Bond to the carbo. That ought to leave you as a plus. All right? Sorry, I'm going to go bond here. Leave you as a plus. Why? Because you're tertiary. You can handle the plus better. You're going to be a better cation. Okay, arrow movement. Right here, as I explained. We do not do something like this. No. <coughs> I don't know what this means. It looks like you're trying to say the nothing was moving there. Yeah, that's what's happening. The problem is we don't, mechanism errors don't show movement of atoms, they show movement of electrons. So I don't know why you would do that. So that's not right. We also may get arrows that look like this. I don't know what that means. I think it means that the cation is moving there. Yes, it is. But we don't use arrows to show movement of charges. Right? So don't, don't do that. Got to know what your arrows mean. And part of organic chemistry is understanding how to use arrows correctly. And you will be tested on that. All right? Now that we got this cation, can you see how maybe we get the major product? What attacks this? Now water. Water's been watching this. Now water comes in here, attacks, and what do we get? All right? I'm just going to do this. Two arrows. All right? We know what this is going to look like. It's going to be just like previous mechanisms. It's going to be an oxygen with positive charge, and then you've got to take care of the proton. Now, on a test, you can't do like that. You have to do full mechanism. But in lecture, instead of me doing that 20 times over the course of the next two weeks and wasting the whole lecture just showing that right there, I'm going to just tell you to look back at previous. Okay? Everybody see what we're doing there? Take it home from there. That's what I'm telling you. It's all, you yeah? And that's the major product because, here's, here's our statement, anytime a carbocation can rearrange to a better one, we're going to say that's going to be the major pathway. Indeed, it often is. So, we got this unexpected product. Again, by a carbocation rearrangement, more specifically a 1-2 alkyl shift, Sometimes this could be called a skeletal rearrangement, again, but I don't use that term often. Because the backbone is sort of rearranged. Carbon with three methyls? No, we no longer have that. We now have a different skeleton. Uh, one below. What's going on down there? Okay, I did the second one first. Why don't you tell me that? <laughs> We're going to have to just erase all that discussion now. Of course not. <laughs> it all applies. We just did the second example first. Well, let's look at this one. Uh, looks like we're doing a hydrohalogenation, yeah? Uh, cation, top or bottom? By the way, is this the same star material as below? No. No, the one below had another methyl here. Okay. Uh, what are we going to make cation, top or bottom? Bottom. 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 BR minus attacks cation? Yeah, I can see how we get that product. But again, that's minor. The major product has the bromine over here. How? H plus Br minus. Alkene attacks H plus. UH there, cation here. 
uh, getting home to the minor products easy. It's just bromide attacking cation, and you're there. You don't even have to take care of a proton. How do we get to this product? By the way, one thing you can do here as a strategy to see where you're going is, does everybody maybe agree that we need that cation? Yeah. If we had that cation, we could get home from there? Yeah. All right. Is there any way to get that cation from this cation? You could take the hydrogen, the bond, the electrons from the hydrogen, and the undrawn hydrogen. Yeah, let's, let's look at this. This carbon does have an undrawn hydrogen. What about the carbon now? It's a carbon with two methyls. Does it have an H on it? No, there's no H there. Let's look over here. How many H is here? Two. Two. That's sort of the second carbon over there. How many H is here? One. What you have here is 1H, 1H, but we need 0 and 2. It looks like an H has moved over. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can draw that H in. Well, in the previous example, an alkyl moved over. So the electrons and the nucleus moved with it. Here, this is going to be the H moving over. These two electrons break free and move over here. What does that give? Well, it gives that. What do you get? Because when it moves over, this is going to be a carbon with only three bonds, and it'll be a plus charge. That's what we have here. This carbon has how many H's? Well, it's shown as neutral. There must be two H's there. There's one here. When that one moves over, right, here it is. Move over. Now, now there's two there. It's all there. You've got to see that it's all there. And from there, we can get home, right? And so here's our mechanism. These electrons attack the carbocation. I'd rather have that a little more precise. Maybe have the cation drawn here and these electrons. Bam. Uh, that's the same Br minus, yeah. What type of, this is a carbocation rearrangement. We went from what, secondary to what? <laughs> Tertiary, okay, that, that seems good. Uh, it wasn't an alkyl, it was an H. And the electrons. H and like the two electrons there. That's what's moved, right? Everybody agree that this is what moved over? What do you want to call this? This thing is called hydride. Because if you had an H or two electrons, it would be a negative charge. And hydrogen anion would be called hydride. What do you call a chlorine anion? Chloride. Chloride. Okay. What do you call a nitrogen anion? Sometimes, not as common. Nitride. Carbon nitride or uh, carbon subnitride or something like that. I endings often means anion. Not always. You know a functional group called an amide. It's not an anion. Very often I is it's called a hydride. Because what's shifting is the H and the two electrons. It's kind of like this. Uh, and yes, it's a 1,2 hydride shift. Type of carbocation rearrangement, type of skeletal rearrangement. This is how you get the major product. Uh, very similar to below, except here, a hydride instead of an alkyl shift. Uh, reaction coordinate diagram. How many intermediates in this mechanism to get the major product? Two, a secondary and then a tertiary reaction coordinate diagram. Uh, a, B, C, 
and D. A, some arbitrary level. Uh, D, we made two sigma bonds. You can use your calculator, but I guarantee you it's going to be exothermic. B, high uh, charge intermediate. Where do you want to put C now? Higher or lower than B? Lower. It's still charged, but it's lower. It's a tertiary cavity. Here we go. All right. Formation of the secondary cation. A transition state and activation energy leading to it. What is the activate? What does the transition state look like? It's somewhere in between where the pi bond is. You're the H, and I'm the pi bond. All right. There's a process here. These electrons moving. That process is the transition state. But that was high energy, that bond breaking and forming, okay? Transition state. From here, now we do our, this is a transition state. All right, a little bit of transition state energy, but not much, because we're coming downhill, so it shouldn't take much to come downhill. Have we talked about the stairs yet? This is like falling down the stairs. It doesn't take much energy to fall down the stairs. All you got to do is go to the top and sort of bend your knees and fall. <laughs> That's all it takes, and you're going to be going down. You don't have to put in a lot of effort. Just lean forward, and you're going to go. All right? The activation energy is you picking up your heel right there. That took a little energy. That's all you need to fall down the stairs. Try it. <laughs> okay? A little bit. You're not going to be doing this to get to sleep. Now you're going to fall downhill even further. How much activation energy is needed? Not much. Which one's the rate determining step most likely? Yes. Rate determining step. From there you're going downhill. Two intermediates, transition states. Um, okay, on the next page, ring expansion. Another type of carbocation rearrangement. Sometimes when you draw rings, sometimes you put the number, the size of the ring there just for quick clarification. Okay? Especially when I draw my six member rings, you know it's like Yeah, yeah, that's a six member ring. <laughs> Alright. Four member ring, obviously. Alright. Uh, if you take this reactor with HBR, you do have this alkene here. You might take cation here, yeah, bromide attacks. But that ain't that product. That product has a five member ring. How do you get that product? Carbocation rearrangement. Give it a try. You know how we did the hydro, uh, the shift, right? We shifted this over. If this is a ring here and you shift this over, it's going to change the size of the ring. That's all that's going on here. Try to figure it out. That is, propose and provide a mechanism for this reaction using mechanism arrows correctly. And on below, and on the next page, and we're moving ahead, you've got the outline. Have a good day, guys. <laughs>